It's true. I think um, a lot of this does come down to uh, this unconscious, implicit ideas about what leadership looks like, what a startup CEO looks like, um, you know, what a what a department chair in neuroscience looks like, you know, it, um, and. Uh, yeah, we have to be conscious of that, and there, there's training, and um, these are all things that, that hopefully will become more normal. Um, I, will, I will use an example of um, raising money for startup companies. So say you invented something in your lab, and now you want to start a company and, and um, bring that thing to the clinic and commercialize it, we say. Uh, you know, it's very difficult for women to get investment from the venture capital companies or the the investors that that money is critical for making it happen. And so the numbers, I mean, I'm not even going to say them because it's depressing. Um, the percentage of women CEO, women-led companies that get funding. And um, I will I will you say... You can say it. It's, it's like 4.4%. Just to put that in context, it's 368 female-led companies that get funding out of 7,002 companies. But mm -hmm. um, that will get better when there are more women investors and there are some great initiatives and some great groups. And also leading by example, so here in New York City, some of our rock star biotech startups are, most of them are led by women here. That's the norm. And, um, you know, that's all the way through to... The, the, the big ones who get $44 million in their first round of funding, all the way through to some of my friends who are raising money um, just to start out. So uh, I think slowly that will change. And um, But, yeah, standing in front of those venture capitalists, um, you know, I've heard some stories about what you, what you get asked as a woman as opposed to if you are the same um, as a man. <laughs> <laughs>